Well, welcome to the Bright Side, David. What's up? Hey, yeah. Well, I've got so many issues. I'll try to go through all of them quick. Okay. Uh, I was told I stopped one up to about 06, from 89 to 06, and I've been on insulin ever since. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't hear the first, David, 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 buddy, sorry. Yeah. I didn't hear the first part of what okay. you said. You're a diabetic and you're on type, you're on insulin now? Yeah, I've been on insulin since 89. Uh, okay. And I was told I was type 1 from 89 to 06. Okay. When I had to switch to endos. And this new one says I'm type 2. And I argue with them every time. It doesn't matter. Uh, but, it's a, it doesn't yeah. matter, though, David. Yeah, Here. Just, you got to do the same things, the, uh, type 1 or type 2. You want some help yeah. with that? The, First, the, well, the, the, I'm also hypothyroidism. It's all connected, and, uh, my friend. It's all connected. Yeah. It's all connected. We can take care of it in one fell swoop. We can do it okay. all in one fell swoop. It's all linked together. You also have digestive issues. And I'm not telling you that because I'm predicting or I'm psychic, but it all goes together. You also have adrenal yeah. issues. Um, they, I know uh, you do, yeah. David, because it all goes together. It's, it comes as a package deal. Okay, so here's the thing. Type 1 diabetes is autoimmune. Type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. But either way, you're not processing sugar. Who cares what it's called? Only doctors care what it's called. Only specialists care what it's called. You're not processing sugar, period. So what you want to do is you want to start to support sugar processing. Oh, by the way, insulin is one of the most pro-aging substances you could ever put in your body, the drug insulin. Not saying you don't, you know, if you're going to do eat as normal, you might need it, but your job should be to wean yourself off of it. So right away, start doing a food. And this is for everybody out there, by the way, dealing with diabetes. Right away, you're going to start to address your, digest, your diet. That means restricting. I would be going zero tolerance, David, for any foods that break down quickly into sugar. If not zero tolerance, as close as you can. Bread, pasta, potatoes, fruit juice, desserts, uh, rice, uh, anything that breaks down to sugar. Starchy foods, cereal foods, you know, bagels, all that kind of stuff. Even pizza crust can do it. So uh, restricting your intake of those kinds of foods. After you eat those kinds of foods, you know, or any carbohydrate foods, or really any foods, drink lots of water and make sure you're using your Sweeties and your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. In fact, sip on the BTT while you're eating those kinds of foods or after all meals. Do a food diary and start to eliminate foods that are causing any digestive distress. Type 1 diabetes, <laughs> excuse me, involves the digestive system because it's an autoimmune disease. Type 2 diabetes involves the digestive system because it involves how we process energy. So either way, you've got to focus on digestive health after you, or alongside of focusing on the blood sugar. Use the Biolumin Nightly Essence, 3 in the morning, 3 at night. Start eating fermented uh, vegetables. Make your own sauerkraut. Just take cabbage, chop it up, and put in some bacterial starter. Cover it up, and it turns into sauerkraut like magic. Same with kimchi okay. or, or, or uh, miso or tempeh. You can play around with fermented foods and do vegetable juices, especially with a Vitamix, so you get the fiber, which will slow down the release of sugar if you do them with meals. Then for the thyroid and the adrenal glands, you got to relax the body. Learn to activate your relaxation nervous system, calming the adrenal glands down. The thyroid will take care of itself once the body is calmed down enough. And once you're on the mighty 90 and taking care of your digestion and, and your blood sugar, the thyroid will take care of itself. And if they dare to give you iodine or, or Synthroid for it, that's not what you need. You need to start working on all these other systems. Calm, calming the body down with hot water, with relaxation techniques, massage, naps, deep breathing. There's lots of ways that you can activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Deep breathing is the all-time greatest way, and plus that will help the thyroid and improve your circulation and, and just have overall health benefits. Don't forget the Mighty 90 essential nutrients. They're very important. If you want to throw a couple more things in, I would be adding the ultimate selenium and the ultimate daily. And if you want to use some other nutritional supplements for the, directly for the blood sugar system, in addition to chromium and vanadium and the B vitamins, you might want to get yourself on timed release niacin and take it with your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, maybe 250 milligrams a day. There's tons more, tons more, but that's a great place for you to start, David. All right, my okay. man? I appreciate it. All, All right, buddy. You have Be a good. good. New year. Have a good New Year yourself. All right, let's go to Wes in Idaho. What's up, my friend? How you doing, Wesley? Pretty good. I uh, wanted to correct myself from yesterday. Okay. I said 95 of 1,100 cured, but it was 95% of 1,100 cured by okay. Cumbra. Uh, he says gel caps are better than dry caps. Uh, he does not do injections of vitamin okay. D. Okay. Uh, gotcha. 
I've only found three uh, good things on YouTube with the translations. For some reason, the translations uh, uh, make no sense at all. But here is a good one. It is Dr. Cumbra explains his treatment with high-dose vitamin D for multiple sclerosis. Got 14, it. 14 minutes long by Spell, Anna Wes, Moros. Wes, spell the doctor's name for me. C-O-I-M-B-R-A. C-O-I-M, for the listeners, C-O-I-M-B-R-A. It's Dr. Cumbra, vitamin D and multiple sclerosis. We talked about that yesterday in the bright side. Wes, I got to move on. Thank you so much for your call, buddy. Happy New Year, bro. Nope. All right. I'm sorry if I hung up on you, Wes, if you were saying something there. Denise in Florida, what's going on? How you doing? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Ben. Happy New Year. Happy New quick Year to question. you. What's going Thank on? Thank you. I want to ask you a quick question about omega-6 fatty acids and oily skin. Okay. Um, I looked at some of your videos with Amanda Rideout, and I know that you mentioned panthenic acid and omega-6 will kind of help with the sticky oil production. Yes. Yes. I just did some reading, and everyone's like, stay away from omega-6. Too much omega-6 is bad. But yeah. I want to figure out how to yeah. get the right amount and what source to get it from. That's a great question. Those are both great questions. And I, don't have a, I only have a minute, so I can't really address them completely like I want to. But here's the thing about omega-6s. There are people who will tell you that you get too much omega-6s if you subsist on the standard American diet because omega-6s are found in grains, and we're all eating a lot of grains. But what they're not telling you is that the omega-6 oils that we get are fried, or they're cooked, or they're processed, or they're refined. So, yeah, we're you're getting a lot of corn oil and soy oil and, and, and safflower oil and sunflower oil, which contain omega-6s, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're getting the omega-6s. And I'm not of the belief that you want to pay attention to that kind of logic. You follow me? Just because you get the oils, theoretically, that have the omega-6s doesn't mean by the time they're in your body or by the time you eat them that the omega-6s are left. So it could very well be that even though we're getting lots of corn oil and safflower oil and sunflower oil and omega-6 containing oils, that we're omega-6 deficient too, and I would say it's a good chance. So you're going to you're gonna have to... Uh, uh, you're going to have to, you know, do your own research on this, but I'm giving you my opinion here. You need both, omega-6s and omega-3s. You need them in the right ratios or proportion, about 2 to 1, 3 to 1, omega-6 to omega-3. That's why you get on the ultimate EFAs, and, De and Denise's point is very well taken. If you have thick, sludgy, sticky sebum, that's a sign that the body is making sebum that doesn't have enough omega-6s in it. Omega-6s omega liquefy your sebum. Denise, I'm just out of time. I apologize. But thanks for bringing those points up. Those are very important points. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out my skin health products, which I formulated to be the truth. Just high concentrations of vitamin A and vitamin C. You can find out about it at truthtreatments.com. And if you're interested in the longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Thanks for listening. Have yourselves a spectacular, beautiful, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye.